Okay, everyone, it's official. Uh, we are recording. So this is Gordon Einstein, your local semi-favorite or at least known crypto attorney based here in Dubai. And I have a special guest today, uh, Olga Yaroshevsky. Am I saying the last name correctly, Olga? Fantastic. That's okay. right. We'll, That's talk, right. we'll talk about last names and all that other stuff. So I, I've known Olga for years and she's super talented, super connected, super gregarious, super ambitious working her way up the corporate ladder, which we're going to go over. Uh, she is one of the most talented people and women in this industry, blockchain, of course, and conferences and events. So Olga, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for making, making the time. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Gordon. Yeah, I think we uh, first met, I think, five or six years ago, wow. whenever everyone started in the crypto industry. So it was really way back then. Yes. I'm very happy that we're still we're still in touch. The connections are still strong. So, you know, all my love goes to you always. Thank you. Okay, show's over. That's great. I'm gonna end on a high point. I think you spoke at almost every event of mine since since 2019. <laughs> almost, almost. And that and the ones I didn't speak at, I don't even count those. You know, so there you go. All right. So look, we, we have some big news about your recent promotion, which we're not gonna touch on yet, but we're gonna get to. We're gonna that's gonna be a major focus. Uh, the company you're working with, which is one of our favorites, is going to be a major focus. And we're also going to approach a new topic on this show, which is the role and prospects and life of women in this industry. You're actually my first female guest, I realized, in my it's male privilege oblivion. So, you know, it's, it's great to have you on. I, I think we're starting at the high point there, which is fantastic. So, Olga, t tell us, let's do a little bit of history. Tell, tell us about you. Where are you from? What did you study? What's your career path? How to get into blockchain and just go from there. Okay, sure. So I'm a journalist. Two minutes or less. No, just kidding. Sorry? Go. I'm okay. joking. I said okay. two minutes or less, but that was not serious. So go Wait, ahead. 30 seconds. <laughs> Please take um, it. Okay. So I am from Russia. I was uh, born and raised here. Mm -hmm. I'm a journalist by education, by background, by profession. I am also a PhD. I completed my PhD thesis back in 20, 2010. Nice. Uh, it doesn't have to do with tech. It doesn't have to do with anything but history of uh, literature and um, 19th century, which is a little bit off topic. But anyways, still, um, I'm a PhD. Um, I used to live in the U.S. for several years, hence the accent. And mm -hmm. um, I once we came back from the U.S., uh, it was the very end of 2018, mm -hmm. first bull run. First um, Bitcoin all-time high, December 2018. That's how I found myself in the blockchain space. A very good friend of mine, big shout out to Vladimir Smirkis. He used to be head of a general manager for Binance in Russia and CIS for the past mm -hmm. three years. Um, so he was the one who literally brought me by hand to the blockchain space. He reached out to me uh, once I got back to Russia and he said, Listen, I need, are you free right now? Because I need some help with an ICO. I'm like, what the hell is ICO? Right. What the hell is blockchain? So here I am. Um, we we did an ICO. We stayed in the project for um, a little over a year. Uh, then I met um, another mentor of mine. Another shout out to Mr. Juwan Lee. We all know him. I know. I think a yeah. lot of people know him. Um, we worked together for four years, I think. Uh, and this is how I found myself in the events industry. We started organizing conferences on blockchain, fintech, mm -hmm. um, and AI. There wasn't such term as Web3 back then. So it was mostly about crypto, um, fintech, and blockchain. And um, we hosted events in Hong Kong before COVID. Um, so and I had a... Sorry, and I saw you in Hong Kong. Yes, yeah, I think I think that's how we, that's how we met, probably Sounds way right. back then, right? So Hong Kong was a different was a different city uh, back then, mm -hmm. um, and then we hosted events in Singapore. Then we switched to virtual format during COVID. Actually, went really well. I hosted um, a Greater Bay Area of China Blockchain Week, Singapore Blockchain Week, Africa Blockchain Week, Hong Kong Blockchain Week. Um, and then um, ever since Dubai opened its doors to um, offline events back in 2021, mm -hmm. um, we moved there. 
So I've been doing events on uh, blockchain, metaverse. This is how when Web3 emerged, I think, as a term, as a, you know, industry department uh, for all things about blockchain and crypto. We started doing this in 2021. So okay. ever since hosting events in Dubai uh, and a little over a year ago, I joined um, AIBC and Sigma one of the leading global brands for conferences on blockchain, AI, AIBC stands for AI and blockchain. Mm -hmm. So uh, blockchain, AI, crypto, Web3 are my favorite topics. I, a little less fintech, I say, these days, but I, I was always, I've always been fascinated how uh, fintech space has been evolving in Asia. Mm -hmm. And I still think Hong Kong and Singapore are one of the biggest hubs for fintech out there. So yeah, that's pretty much the journey. I think overall I hosted over 16 conferences over the last um, one, six. five years, sorry. One six or six zero, I didn't quite hear. One six, one okay. six. <laughs> that's, that's a lot. Which is a lot, yeah, which is a lot. And um, we have, we just hosted our big show in Dubai, which you attended. Okay. And- uh, I didn't just uh, attend thank you very much. I was on the stage. Yes, you're yes. always on stage. I yes. love seeing you on stage. So, um, yeah, that's that's the story. And um, now I am. The uh -huh. Before we give the, before we give the news there. Okay. How did you make your initial connection to AIBC? How did that magic happen? Oh, that was very interesting. Uh, so back in 2019, mm -hmm. it was my first trip to Malta. By the way, so yes. another yes. shout out to Malta. That's awesome. Malta is the hometown for ABC and Sigma. It's uh, This is where the head office is. This is where Eman is from. And uh, all of our executives are from Malta as well. This is amazing how a, a tiny Mediterranean island has become, you know, yes. a hub for, for iGaming and for crypto as well. So this was back in 2019. I attended AIBC as an exhibitor. We had a booth there. Mm -hmm. Um for um for the november event in malta this is where akon performed i don't know if you remember yeah, this it was, it was an amazing event so yes five years ago uh i first attended aibc as an as an exhibitor as an attendee mm -hmm. um i then attended a bunch of shows throughout the years and then um a little over a year ago when i decided to um to look for for a new job i just uh, texted emma and here i am <laughs> really nice yeah. so you, 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 you knew emma from having exhibited and being at these shows and then when you had an opportunity to, to try something new you reached out to him and i'm, I'm yes hopefully, that's what hopefully, happened. hopefully he was smart enough to give you an immediate yes <laughs> well yeah i think well if you know emma you know he is very um he makes decisions very quick, quick, you know, he's very That's fast right. and uh, he's very active, very energetic. I think this is how, and well, um, overall, it's a small industry, you know, um, wh whichever country you organize events in, mm. um, you, there's always like, um, a very small circle of people that you would reach out to. Yes. And, uh, there's, uh, there are certain people that you trust and you like what they're doing. Mm. So, um, I know it's not very modest of me, but I have to be honest, like by the time I was um, like a free agent on the market, I just thought like, okay, I can consider myself like an asset, you know? So I think it would be my choice to to choose like a team or a company that I would like to work with. So mm -hmm. I didn't tell anyone and I just reached out to several people myself, like, I don't know, three or four people. And I think Emon was the first to reply. So, and well, it was very fast. Because he's yes, and the onboarding process was very fast, immaculate. I, I bet, like 10 minutes later, it's like, here's your desk, here's your email, yeah. here's your paycheck. In, you're in. He, he, he's a dynamo. You know, I, I was, I, I talked to, maybe not to him directly, but a few of his friends who've known him for a while and what he's built and the speed that he's built it and the thing he's up, you know, it's, I don't know if it's so crazy, but he's, he's overcome a lot of changes and challenges and incumbents and he's, he's sort of a pirate yet he's a very nice guy it's it's, it's interesting absolutely you know absolutely and i've you know I, I, I've, I've always admired him and i've always admired 
what he's been doing. And even Juwan and I, we had a we had a chat before before we part ways. And he was like, Yes, Eman is he's the man, really, and he's building an, a huge empire. And I'm really happy to be part of, of the team. Super. Okay, so uh, pending your announcement, which we'll cover in a second, what was what was your exact role with AIBC Sigma? Um, what, so what have you been doing here to four? I'm a conference producer. Okay. Also, um, I am an MC event host. I present on stage. Yes. So this is what I've been doing. I've been producing conference, working with the speakers, agenda for all AIBC events. And last year we had... So it was uh, Dubai, Sao Paulo, and then Manila, and then Cyprus and Malta. So five events last year um, and um, with three big events and two smaller regional events. Yes. Um, so I'm 100% responsible for the conference agenda, inviting speakers, working on the topics, mm -hmm. some kind of media partnerships, community partnerships, and sometimes strategic partnerships with some local um, organizations and communities but mostly yes conference producing and i'm seeing okay and your big move that just happened is yes i am now the managing director for the whole aibc brand thank you yes. <laughs> it's a big honor i think it's 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 a huge it's a huge thing for me uh and um apart from still doing all the conference work mm -hmm. i am now responsible for you know, expanding the brand, um, making it closer to Sigma so that we can, um, let's say, cater the needs of the attendees that, as you know, Sigma and ABC is one event under one roof. So it's a one big expo and it's a very mixed and diverse crowd. So um, I, I, I am... Let's explore that for a second, because to be honest, I had my own confusion about what the distinction is between these two and how it plays into their, their history and why they're co-branded to a certain extent. So maybe you can explain to the audience if someone's unfamiliar with these brands. Right. So um, Sigma and AIBC are like twin brothers or sisters. Mm -hmm. uh, there are two events held simultaneously under one roof with just different branding and different content flows and uh, I would say slightly different audience. So if AIBC targets uh, Web3 crowd, crypto people, blockchain people, yes. um, and um, people who are interested in expanding their businesses in the realms of metaverse, um, Web3, et cetera, uh, Sigma is a, um, is a platform that serves um, iGaming industry players. Yes. And... Um, it's an, I would say it's, it's an authority in the iGaming space uh, with all that Sigma and his team and Eman has um, managed to develop over these years. Mm -hmm. uh, this industry is huge, it's growing. Um, with iGaming, I mean um, land-based casinos, online casinos, uh, iGaming platforms, uh, batting platforms, sports books, esports as well. So everything that connects to what we call an iGaming industry, affiliates, operators, etc. Payment. So this is payment, payment provision is a big part of this. Payment yes. providers, exactly. This is this is one of the bridges that connects uh, blockchain and crypto industry with what Sigma does mm -hmm. is uh, payment providers, uh, crypto platforms that serve as uh, payment gateways for these platforms, right? Um, so, uh, and then eventually, I guess. These two events just grew up exponentially, mm -hmm. and um, um, and now we just coexist together under one roof, with uh, with a focus on uh, tech crowd and gaming crowd. Yes. Um, if you, let's say, if you buy a ticket, you will be able to attend both. So it's two events for one price. I would say it's one big expo. Uh, two stages for different content for Sigma. Multiple days, for, is worth mentioning. Several days, yes. Uh, we, we What we also do is, uh, of course, um, these events are not just, you know, uh, revolving around conference. There are also a bunch of side events, mm -hmm. of course, dinners, networking events. And uh, we usually try to, you know, organize different themed 
parties and themed events for people to network with the ones that they need to. Right, I, I've been to a bunch and the excursions are super. I, I did one in Cyprus was neat. I hadn't really explored Cyprus and you, you did some cool events, including a winery. So that was, that yeah. was fun. You always include yeah. me. In the stuff. Now, you, you made an interesting comment to me. These are, it's, it's, it's neat that these are brands that are in parallel, but you said something interesting, which is you're going to bring them closer. How do you bring... How do you bring them closer and why, why are you sure you want to? Um, well, so that people will get um, a feeling of one big cool event, right? Okay. Um, when, when attending our conference, because it's really a big event. I don't know if you've been, you've been to Malta, right? And you've been to, you've been to Malta this, you were in Malta this year I in November. I, I, I wrestled my way through. You know, I was in Malta, I was on stage all those times. For all you those were on stage half a day. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's huge. It's it's one of the biggest events. It's the biggest event I personally hosted on yeah. stage. 25,000 people. It's a lot. And, you know, occupying the whole port of Valletta, it's it's a big move. It's literally, you know. Sorry for jumping, but, but why, why merge the brands when they coexist nicely? Or seem to coexist nicely? Or they, of course, do coexist nicely. Uh, but I think the industries develop like for example one of the one of the tracks that i just introduced in dubai was a web3 and traditional sports track for it this is for wow. aibc right so we're talking about um nft and web3 activations for tennis uh we had uh, um a team that um was responsible for activation of this uh, binance and ronaldo nft collection we had okay. uh, uh, a VP of Sandbox, Bertrand, uh, speaking about how sports uh, activations are popular in the, in the metaverse and in the gaming space. We have a lot of people attending uh, Sigma from the gaming uh, world, right? Yeah. So I would also like to, you know, to interact with these people because gaming industry is something where crypto and blockchain also has a lot of potential. Plus, Web3 plus Metaverse is still out there. Um, some people say gamify is dead, <laughs> but you know, um, there's a there's a huge uh, grant that was uh, just issued like several million dollars for specifically for Web3 and AI startups, for Web3 and gaming startups. So there's there's okay. a lot of a potential into it. So why don't we you just... just interrupt. You, you just got me thinking because, you know, maybe, maybe it's a little bit scary. Like most... Everything involving AI is a little bit scary to me, but maybe there's an interaction between this the AI and the eye gaming that needs to be explored. Of course. That, that seems like that would be a very rich topic, both in terms of its possibilities and its potential dangers. That's interesting. Yes, I, we absolutely, Sigma absolutely covers it. Um, I like how we talk about Sigma. Well, <laughs> I need to talk about it. you see here. Anyways, uh, in... I'll give you an example. Um, I hosted, um, moderated the uh, conference in Cyprus, mm -hmm. September last year, covering uh, CIS and Eastern European markets. Yes. And we had the National uh, Betting Authority on board. And I specifically hosted a panel about how um, regulators use AI tools to, um, to foster what they call responsible gaming behavior, mm. right? To try to prevent addictions, how AI tools are incorporated into in-game mechanics to try to prevent people from, you know, getting addicted, because it's one of the biggest problems in the industry. And we always work with regulators and regulators are there and they're using AI tools for that. So this is actually happening. It, this stuff is moving so fast that it blows my mind. I mean, I, I'm sure we're, we're, if it's not happening already, I'm sure there's like AI that can tell when people are, are bluffing or are not bluffing in a way that's maybe better than just plain machine learning. You know, it, it, it probably is. It actually, actually makes me a little bit nervous, but I think it's very cool. Like most of the stuff. It, it's very cool. Well, with AI, it's a different story. This is, uh, this is how I perceive this and for ABC specifically, because our conferences are mostly B2B, right? So let's say a, a business owner would want to come to an event and learn more about how, how artificial intelligence in in any way, whether it would, would be a generative AI or some LLM models. Um, 
how AI tools can be applied to their business, whether it's a marketing business or, I don't know, entertainment or, a, I don't know, a sports industry or a blockchain platform. So there are multiple ways to do it. Plus, people are generally curious about how they can use AI in their everyday life, right? Yes. Um, we have a we have a very cool speaker, uh, Tony Ventura. He attends sure. um, our events. You saw his his uh, speech right now. Why? That's what he does. So he basically um, gives you an overview of the latest AI tools that you can use now mm. for communication. For um, I don't know for social media. Uh, there's one analyzing people's LinkedIn pages, even so. This can be used in your business. You can use it in your work. You can use it like for your personal life every day. And this is these are the AI tools that um, you don't have to, you know, search through the Internet. You don't have to be an AI expert. You can just come to an event and, uh, you know, read the agenda and see if there are any AI tools that you can actually apply. We sometimes, you know, invite people who um, who tell you about this, who can guide you can yes. tell you this is a free tool uh this is a tool that can be you know uh scaled to a i don't know a business infrastructure or anything like that so um i think it's a very good transition from just talking about whether it's a bear market or a bull market or crypto trends this, right this is great this is great um, where's blockchain and all this Oh, we talk a lot about blockchain solutions that are still out there. Um, solutions for enterprise. Um, interestingly, real world asset tokenization. Yes. It, I I hear very polar opinions about this, but people are still keen on talking about this. Uh, whether you can tokenize this, tokenize that, real estate, I don't know, travel booking platforms, whatever is out there. And it's all applicable to, you know, business development, to business solutions. Why not? In in, in all parts of the world. So um, also blockchain, we talk about blockchain as in um, digital identity development, for example. Um, in Malta, we had a very good track on blockchain and AI yeah. for SDGs for sustainable tech. Mm -hmm. um, amazing speakers out there still doing great job, you know. Uh, we had IOTA Foundation presenting on their digital product passports. We had Dr. Michaela from Singularity. This is from the AI side. Uh, so she spoke about how it affects sustainable uh, SDGs and ESGs globally, right? So, so many things to discuss out there. I only have one agenda for per, per every event. <laughs> this is, you got your hands full. And I think you heard, I think I heard you say also, you're not just merging the brands, but you're expanding somehow. Did I hear that? No, not merging. No, I mean it, not, not, not merging, but aligning more closely. But I think I think on top of that, you're expanding the show. Is it more locations, or did, did I hear that correctly? No, locations locations are set at least for for this year. Uh, what I would I would do, what I would like to do is to work more with the local organizations, like uh, in Dubai. We uh we had a very good relationship with the DMCC, for example, so that they can showcase how crypto projects are being developed in the in the in the in Dubai, right? In the UAE. Well, given the legislation and regulation efforts, I think it's 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 a very cool place to do an actual showcase. What you can do, what you what you can do now, what you can do next year, right? Um and are, are you um, with Ahmed bin Suleiman? The mm -hmm. chairman of the DMCC, I, I imagine you are. Am I what? Sorry, so uh, uh, I'm friend Lee. He's so busy. I don't know how many friends he has, but I'm friend. Oh, Lee, Ahmed. The, uh, yeah, yes. Ahmed of the DMCC. We were trying. Yes, we were trying to get him to speak uh, this year, but he was traveling. But yes, definitely. He, yes, he's I mean, hard to nail down, but he's great. Amazing. Yes, yeah. I agree. Interesting. Okay, I'm glad so, to see that connection. And are you? Just so you know, you probably are watching the DIFC pass a new virtual oh, yes. asset law. So this is yes, this is this is getting exciting. Yes, just just recently, yes. So see, I mean, it's it's very it's it's the best race <laughs> you could ever witness. It's yeah. so cool. Um. So, and I mean, uh, as Sigma works with regulators to uh, make the iGaming industry 
maximum, um, give it maximum transparency uh, and, um, you know, try to keep it out of the gray area. I think crypto, crypto has been in the gray area for a long time in many yes. countries. Um, now, well, kind of Dubai, yeah, true. <laughs> but um, in Dubai, I mean, there's a, there's a regulation in place in Dubai. Um, but for example, our next step this year is Manila. Okay. We're going to Philippines in June. Um, and uh, last year, I had a very pleasure. I had a pleasure to host uh, the SEC Commissioner of Philippines um, mm. on my stage. He was talking about how uh, SEC perceives uh, digital asset industry, how it uses AI actually in their work. And um, he was there on stage and he grabbed the microphone and said, like, does anyone have any questions? I'm here to talk. I'm here to talk with, you know, crypto people, with crypto businesses. I'm here to exchange opinions, ideas. So regulators are very open in that space. So I would also like AIBC to be that platform for um, regulators to sit down with businesses and, uh, you know, get to know them more closely. That's that's warming my heart. Because the actually part of the reason I moved from the U.S. to Dubai is, you know, is, as great as the U.S. is, my frustration with the glacial and punitive nature of the re regulatory environment there, and to hear that there's other places like the Dubai, I guess in the, in the Philippines, that are engaging with the community, and then you're providing a platform for that engagement. That's that's a lovely thing. So, yeah, my hat my hats off to you, and I'm clapping now. Let, let's talk about you, you raised an interesting topic before we started recording, which is. You're obviously a woman. You're in this industry. Um, you've gone through. You said that things have evolved over time. I'm obviously, you know, got my, you know, in this life, I'm, I guess I'm a guy. You know, though you never know these days. So I, I don't know things from your perspective. What What's it like being a woman in this industry? What are you seeing? What are you seeing? And then what are your fellow female professionals who work in this industry seeing and feeling? Oh, sorry. Um, yes, I think a lot has changed. Um, well, so since I, so I understand because I, I understand, I'm talking like a five, when you say it changed, what was it before that it changed from, what, what was your initial experience? Um, well, um, ever since I started in, in this industry, I would call it tech industry, right? Even though it's events, mm -hmm. we're still, I'm still very much into tech and finance and business related to tech and finance. Um, Let's say um, back in 2019 in in Hong Kong, um, we used to host um, host like panels or smaller events that were uh, that were that had a name like women in tech or like women in blockchain right. or ladies in in the tech space, female ladies leaders. Are good. Yeah. Now I see a different pattern and a different trend now. Um, as um, you know, Sara Almadani, she's an AI, she's our ABC ambassador, sure. amazing spiritual leader, um, and um, she's a prophet for entrepreneurs and for female entrepreneurs out there. And she said once she said a very good thing that actually stuck in my mind. Um, we all hear this narrative about women empowerment. Mm -hmm. And women don't actually need to be empowered. If you try to empower a woman, it mm -hmm. feels a little bit patronizing, you know, as if she needs to be yeah. empowered, as if she's not powerful enough to do it herself. Um, I think it's very much the case lately. We don't need to put an emphasis on separating women and men in the tech space. We just need a fair representation. I mean, it's always my goal to at least for the conference program to put as many women as I can on stage. And I know that if it's an event, especially if it's a crypto or blockchain event where they have zero female speakers or zero keynote <laughs> female speakers, it's a, it's a shitty event. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I would, yes. All, uh, moreover, uh, I first came across this, I think about three years ago, um, it was with a bunch of my speakers uh, from Asia. Uh, there is, um, so sometimes people sign um, some some kind of a memorandum, some kind of a thing 
like a petition that they will not participate in a panel or in a speaking event if at least 50% of speakers' representations are women. We used to call it uh, manals, you know, a panel where with only yes. men on it. <laughs> right. So uh, people are opting out of manals on purpose and men are opting out of manals. They would say, okay, where are the lady speakers? Where are the female representation? This in this particular you know, problem or question. Why don't we have any ladies in here? Did you guys not make an effort to invite any ladies to here? Well, I gotta ask, are they asking why aren't there any or why are they are they asking why aren't at least half? Because it's two very different questions. Sometimes there aren't any, you know? <laughs> and sure. uh, yes, and sometimes people are requesting like, I will happy I will be happy to participate in this speaking session if you guarantee that out of four speakers, two will be women sometimes i get that and it's and it's amazing i have to say it's fair because it pushes event organizers to put more women on stage and it pushes us to also you know acknowledge that actually this industry should not be male dominated right and it it should not be perceived as male dominated mm -hmm. from a personal perspective i have to say it's not a nice thing to say but I don't have to be nice here. No, um, that was me. I, mean. <laughs> um, I guess, though, it's the case for a person with people with certain mentalities mm -hmm. or certain culture codes, maybe coming more from a traditional countries or conservative countries. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think, I think I've experienced this in, in Dubai as well a couple of times. So just imagine that... Um, you and I are having a conversation and uh, there's also, let's say, three or four men standing with us and mm -hmm. having a conversation. And then another guy uh, comes up. He would say hello. He would shake hand with each one of you and he would not say hello to me or even look at me. Worst case, they would just, you know, look sideways. Mm -hmm. It happened a hundred times with me like a hundred times at networking events it always happens seriously and it would just they would just look through me they would think i'm a piece of furniture or a hostess i don't know even if i'm a hostess why don't you just say hello to me it's, it shows good manners right mm -hmm. um and it happened so many times to me you know men talking over um not asking for your opinion not listening to to you or just you know up until they ask what do you do or, or like and i'm like you know i'm the main organizer of this event like, like <laughs> i oh. invite you <laughs> like oh okay hello then yeah. um so it happened many times with me and i saw this happening with other uh ladies in industry many times seriously we're not taking uh, let, 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 let me ask you and I, I, I believe you but i want to i want to ask do you think any of that is men being afraid um i i actually uh, i asked a bunch of folks about this you know as a random question i'm like why do you think it's happening so the most popular answer would be uh they don't know how to act they don't know whether they're supposed to shake your hand or not supposed to shake your hand. Sometimes people don't like shaking hands. Sometimes ladies would, you know, start acting weird when someone tries to shake their hand. I've never seen this, to be honest, in my life. If you are embarrassed or if it's awkward for you to shake someone's hand, just say hello, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's just mere politeness. It's very, it, there's a basic etiquette and manners. And, um, well... I think, I think it's getting better because <laughs> now at least uh, people always say, men always say hello. And, um, and I think it's, it's getting much better. It's getting much better. Um, so not putting spotlight, not, not putting, you know, this emphasis on women empowerment is a very big trend that I see. And also, oh, sorry to jump in, but I, I think you're, I think you're talking about how you know, at first, it was, it was effort required because it's such an anomaly to have women involved. Now there's yep. been a period of time, if I'm understanding correctly, when they have been involved, it's less of an anomaly. So you, you don't have to highlight it or segregate it or so much yeah. because it just kind of is. 
but there's still more work to be done to maintain the strength of the trend is, is what I think I'm hearing. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and well, you, you attend events too a lot and you speak at events and you go mm -hmm. to events. Like what is the percentage of women that are putting, that are put out for public speaking? Out look, 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 okay. I'm going to be a little bit controversial. So I, I organize events and, you know, and I organize interviews and you know what the most frustrating thing in the world is asking women to speak sometimes because they often say no. And they're, and it's, it's, bizarre to me because I will make an effort to get female speakers on and then sometimes it's like women empowerment speakers and they're like I'm not ready or you know I don't feel you know it's like you know and you know me I'm a big friendly bear it's like and it's on a freaking screen you know and it's and I talk to other people also and I, I don't know what your experience is but there's you know I, I would actually I actually reached into this a couple of years ago I actually reached into a woman in blockchain group that I was in mm -hmm. I, I did a call for speakers and no one responds. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? You know, it's like, I don't get this. You should be beating down the door, both to promote your own brand, but also to sort of help guys like me that are, you know, I'm not doing it as charity. It's just, I want to bounce it out. You know, it's good to get different perspectives. So, you know, are there legit technologists, women in here? If you are, speak up. I want to know what you have to think. I want to put you in front of the group. And it's crickets. And I'm like, what the heck? So I, I, I value what you're saying and I value what you're doing. I'm just letting you know that it's sometimes, sometimes that we don't get an answer and it's, it, I, I don't understand it. I don't think it has to do with, um, with women. I just, okay. I think it just has to do with the uh, people being <laughs> busy or, well, anyway, you can, you can ask me next time. <laughs> I'll get it. You well, you're on me. the show. Okay. You know, they're, 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 look, like, you, you, the moment you cross my vision, I'm like, Oh, great. Olga would be great to have on the show. You're gregarious. You're awesome. You know, you're, you're there, um, but you, you. I don't. I don't think it was just busy because you know I, I do the same thing in a group full of guys, and mm. they're all like me, 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 me. And, and sometimes it's the people I don't want to be on the show. I'm like, oh ah. my god, you know, it's just shame <laughs> on me for asking a group because now I have to I have to say yes to this person. But it was, I don't know, just. just I'm, I'm not saying this principle. I'm just saying I had a moment of this experience. So for for what it's worth, but I, I'm glad to see that things are changing. You know, you're, you're obviously a very professional person. You've done a, a lot. You, you should be acknowledged and accepted and put, you know, on, on the top of the mountain for organizing everything. And I think you're also a good role model for others. And I, I met Sara. I think her name is, I met her in Malta. She's very dynamic. She's very outspoken. And, and I appreciate the point. She, I always thought that empowerment was a little bit condescending also. It's more like, you know, it's like, it, it's not ours to give you. It's not anyone's to give anyone. We're all human. You know, but the, the, that being said, you know, at the beginning process, maybe some people needed a, a nudge, a, a helpful push. But I, I think, I think maybe we're, you know, like like you're saying, we're we're kind of moving forward on that, and now we can just kind of work on the details, which is getting more equality on the panels. So, this is absolutely, I, I absolutely agree. I mean, well, first of all, Sara is a superstar, and she's a. You know, you want to be in her vicinity. You want to enjoy her energy That's all the right. time. One other thing, by the way, I wanted to say is just uh, what I see getting a lot better is ladies supporting ladies mm -hmm. in, in our industry. It has, it's, it, you know, ladies are, are doing so much better in that sense. Mm -hmm. I get so much support from ladies and I give so much support, but I've always been, you know, I've always been trying you to do always this. Cool like that. Yeah, thank you. Yes. I'm that this is what I do. I really like the, you know, this, the energy that we give each other. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I've seen lately is a tremendous support, like from, from ladies in, in our industry. And it's amazing. And it's like, you know, it's, it's just very natural and effortless. And whenever you want to post in the ladies group, let me know, I'll do it for you. <laughs> well, I, I want to post, like, like we mentioned before the recording, it's like a I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leverage your vast speaker network to get speakers on this show. Of course, we'll talk about AIBC and Sigma. And yes, I, you know, I want to, this thing started three, started back up three weeks ago and you are the first female speaker and it wasn't intentional. It's just, I'm surrounded by guys, you know, and, you know, here you are. And it, it, maybe this conversation needed to happen to like fire up a neuron and be going, eh, you know what, I, I, I should do this. And so, you know, thank you. I'm very honored that I'm the first lady that you <laughs> you were thinking of, you know. And by the way, another shout out. 
Uh, and this is, I think, a good... I'm extremely proud of uh, Sigma CEO, Emily mm -hmm. McAuliffe. Uh, she has, yeah, yes, she's the CEO of the Sigma Empire. She runs a very big company in a very tough... And this industry, iGaming industry, yeah. is a little different from, from blockchain and crypto. And uh, it really is, I would say, male dominated. There's a lot of testosterone. And, and it's not an easy job. And I am so proud of her, Emily. I love you. Emily, shout out. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's it's very, it's a big move for, for, I don't know, for all of us, for the industry, for her, for Emma and for everyone. And she, I couldn't imagine anyone else doing this job except for her, seriously. So, it's Super. it's amazing. You, you you also know so many high level uh ladies, right? In Dubai, in other countries. I would say in Russia too, to be honest. I I out of curiosity, I'm still attending tech mm -hmm. events here. And um, you know, not too many lady speakers, unfortunately. <laughs> if well, they are not let's, let's, let's work on that. Journal. You know, I, I let's let's work it. I'm gonna work on that. I think it's a good. I think it's a good 2024 mission. Because you know, I, I am hosting these events here. I, you know, now we're talking like friends, even though we're recording it. But you know, I am part part of my 24 strategy is to organize these in person events, which hopefully you'll join when you're here. All these lunches and iftars and everything else. And it just started, but I am going to make an effort to see if I can get sponsors or speakers. Um, female sponsors or speakers. I think it'd be, I think it'd be good. No, you know what? I take it back. What, what, what am I thinking? Okay, so Carla Naji is one of my partners. She works at IFSA. She's a great speaker, and I've actually had her at two events. I, I, I just, I didn't do it intentionally. I just did it because she's awesome. But maybe that's, maybe, maybe that's, a, maybe that's a comment that things have evolved. I mean, when you don't choose because of the gender, but you just choose because this person's great. You know, or just you know, you don't even th think about it consciously. But I, I, I hear what you're saying. I mean, there, there. I think there's such a history of not including women or putting women in this, in this, you know, exclusionary position that for a while you needed some conscious thought on it, and then maybe it hopefully becomes automatic or just rote. Am I making sense? I think it's just your experience, and you also live with Irina, who has a very <laughs> intense feminine energy. So you just. <laughs> You know, you bathe yourself in a feminine energy thanks to her. So that's, She's awesome. that's why you don't feel lack of it, you know? No, I, I guess I'm not like the normal nerd. No, I'm surrounded by her and her friends. And yeah, it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Probably because of that, you know? Okay. But, but thank thank you for letting I, me off the hook. Huh? Thank you for letting me off the hook. See, say hi to her. I wanted to talk to her. Well, cool. uh, so we're well, looking, it's always great. You know, we're, I think we're gonna have you on more uh, because I, I'd love to see, you know, I know you're gonna be a rampaging success in your new position and I want to track the developments and just, you know, share the good news with people. And even if the short snippets, I would just want to be able to share it to this growing community. Is there any last topic you want to cover or any last words of wisdom or just, you know? Yeah, it was yours. of course. Um, yes, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you for making me for making me making the history of being the first lady yes. on your show. Yes. Okay. Um, so yes, check out the schedule that we have for this year. We're in Manila in June. It's really interesting. Uh, it was my first Manila show last year. And it was so good. It was great. It's a completely different uh, crowd. It's a completely different community, different from Dubai, I'd say, because yeah. we're very used to events in Dubai, right? So I really invite everyone to come over um, and enjoy Philippines, right? Go to islands after the event, you know, hang out in Manila. Um, after that, we are in Budapest in Hungary to cover Eastern European markets. And then... I want to go into that one. Yes, wow. of course. Of course, I yeah. want to go to all of them, but that would hungry. I, you know, yeah, ready. Budapest. I think it, okay. it would be, be very nice, very interesting. Sure. Um, so, and of course, the mother of all conferences, Malta in November. <laughs> we'll see you there. Yes. Uh, so that's the that's the schedule for this year. We're coming we're coming back to Dubai next year, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, I think what else? Oh yes, and I'm looking for a business development manager. <laughs> 
So right. where so what does a business development manager do? What do you need exactly? Let's use this as a classified. Yes. Um, so this is how ABC is expanding, I guess. I'm expanding my team. Um, right. So we I'm really looking for a person who has um uh, connections in, in blockchain and uh, crypto and AI space and gaming, someone responsible and curious. Um, this person will be working closely with me. Uh, and I think <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> right. Um, that's we're enough that everyone should go for the job because you're awesome. Thank you. I'm a good boss, you know. <laughs> so, um, uh, that would be working closely with me to um to you know expand the list of AIBC partners to maintain current AIBC um connections and the, and the list of our partners and clients so um ideally if you have been in the crypto and blockchain space for at least a year or two if you're interested to um largely expand your network and uh, big events are all about networking. Yes. If you like to travel, if you are ready for what we call event mode, <laughs> because it can be stressful sometimes as an event organizers, yes. but still it's worth it. So um, I think it's one of the greatest offers out there on the market right now, because um, you know bull market comes and it goes and events are still there. <laughs> I, I like it. So everyone watching this, um, if this is you or you know someone that's like you, you should definitely reach out to Olga. I'll, I'll put her information. Hmm? Yes. Let me know. Reach out yeah, to me. Put, I'll put your information in the show notes. It, she's awesome. ABC Sigma is awesome. This is a chance of a lifetime. Don't mess it up. Reach out. Right. Yes. Thank yes. you. Perfect. Okay, we're getting the note. We're getting the show on that note. I'm gonna stop the recording, Olga. Thank you very much. We'll have you back on the show. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank yep. you. Yeah.